Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is season two, episode five of the unofficial official story. I'm Jennifer, and I narrowly escaped getting COVID. I was exposed. I think I'm good. I'm tested. But yeah, it's spreading, guys. Mask up and be careful. Hey, and I'm I'm Dwayne. I'm uh, not getting COVID, I hope, because <laughs> I have to travel recently. Uh, soon, excuse me, not recently. I'm all discombobulated. But I'm here, COVID-free and ready to go. And I'm Koji, and I had COVID a couple months ago, and I'm good. This is a podcast where we tell you the official story. We look at the paranormal, conspiracies, unexplained phenomena, cryptids, true crime, and by the end, we're going to tell you what really maybe happened. And in this episode, we're asking the question, is Prince Charles a vampire? Do-do-do-do. But first, more importantly, we have to meet our guest. Cat C, what up? Hey, Cat. Hey, guys. Thank you for having me. Cat is an actress. She's also a model. She's a comedian and filmmaker. Cat fell in love with the performing arts at a young age while she studied dance, music, martial arts, and she's been involved in many shoots of all kinds. Cat is a strong supporter of various animal welfare and environmental groups. Being an animal lover, Cat loves to devote her time to animal shelters too. So welcome to the show, Kat. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How are you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. I love the summertime. I don't know about you. (laughs) What martial arts do you know? Just very traditional, typical Chinese Kung Fu. I did a little bit of Taekwondo as well, but I didn't pass blue belt. (laughs) <laughs> so the biggest, qu- most important question is, can you beat up Dwayne? Uh, <laughs> let's do it after the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like your chances. I like your chances. You really like your chances. <laughs> like your chances. <laughs> Wait, Dwayne, do you know any martial arts? No, no, not at all. Oh, okay. All. So she's going to kick your butt. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I just studied, uh, you know, um, I don't know, around the way foo, you know what I mean? But I actually haven't, I talk about it in my act, I haven't had a fight since uh, junior high school, so. Okay, good. Yeah, I don't I don't even. Staying yeah, out of trouble. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm pretty strong, you know. Yeah, so. You yeah. work out a lot. I work out a lot. Yeah. I don't know if that, if that translates, and I do tie ball, so. I almost got in a fight before the, for youth baseball, so I'm constantly fighting, but. <laughs> I do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Brazilian jiu-jitsu is amazing. I think it's the most useful martial art. Well, maybe that's the one I'll take. My whole thing is that uh, I watch a lot of videos on Instagram of people getting knocked out. They're really funny. It's always someone who's the aggressor, you know, and then he gets knocked out. So it's like, it's just... Don't start a fight. Well, no, so, so there, there is a way, like, if, if somebody's putting their head towards you, mm-hmm. it means they've never fought before. Uh, because anybody who knows how to fight, whether boxing or anything, they don't, you don't, you like, you want to keep your distance. Right. But by the way, so you want to, you want to do jujitsu? I'm going to be opening a studio next month in wow. Alhambra. Uh, I'm not going to be teaching, so you don't want to take a class from me, but <laughs> that's right. Uh, we, we recorded there, but, uh, but we should get back to cat. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, back to cat. Like you say, yeah. after the cat beats me up, oh we'll, my we'll both we'll go back and take some juice. <laughs> you know what? You can use a taser gun because I just went to this Hollywood stunts, uh, like kind of like for the Asian American, uh-huh. like all the stunt team. And they gave me this taser gun. Like it's super cool. It's pink. You can't oh, borrow nice. that. Oh, cute. Wow. Do you have it with you? I don't. Let Next time I bring it. By the way, congratulations, <laughs> Koji, uh, for that studio. I'm definitely going to come to take classes. Sounds awesome. really cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so I want to hear more about the stun gun. So is it a is it a real gun or is it like a sex toy? It looks kind of like sex toy. It's like, <laughs> it's, like, it's, it like, it's pink. It's like taser. Look like taser. And then you put it on your kind of the uh, middle finger mm. and they just uh, kind of press a button and they're going to kind of taser. Like they, they, they told us, you know, what you can do is kind of you have to touch the skin. If they wear a jacket it won't work. Oh. So it's very useful for man and woman out there. Oh, wow. Right, right. So especially in the summertime. <laughs> yeah, in the summertime. More useful in the on summertime. The beach, the yeah, beach. Right. yeah. <laughs> Probably not useful at a ski resort. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> Space is probably yeah. not a useful place. If you get attacked by the ski mask killer, it yeah. won't help you. But, um, <laughs> or if you're on like the International Space Station. Right, right. Like, you know, outside the space station, it's probably not helpful too. Uh, how did you get into, uh, how did you get into comedy? So I started like improv, like at a nerd. Do you guys remember the school? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Behind the uh, comic book store? Yes, it yeah. was on a comic, yeah, yeah, on Sunset. It's called, it was called a Meltdown Comic Book Store. And then Chris Hardwick started a school a couple years ago. So I was taking the class over there for a while. 
and then I was taking like an acting class. And then I just realized if you can do comedy, you can do pretty much everything, right? Like drama. So I kind of got into comedy by taking the improv class. And then there are lots of stand-up comedy in our class as well. So I, I was like, okay, maybe I should write comedies. So I was writing lots of jokes. And then one time I was in the Uber and I would start telling jokes to a Uber driver. This Uber driver said, oh, you're actually really funny. I said, yeah, you should do stand up. I'm like, okay. So then I finally decided to stand up a couple of years ago. So I'm still kind of like a baby. People said, you need to start doing this for 10 years. I'm like, oh. Is there a shortcut? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say there is a shortcut. And uh, just more you write and, and listen to your sets, just keep listening and writing, listening and writing, listening and writing. And that's how you surpass people. Because some people just do it and they don't listen. Mm. You have to listen to every single set that you do. But it's, it's really great that that Uber driver said that to you. You know, like you're the first person in history, like the Uber driver told you what you should do. Because <laughs> Uber drivers are always telling you what they do, right? They're yeah. like, well, I, I'm driving Uber, but I'm I really do this, I really do that. So <laughs> he must have really been impressed to, to big up you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and Thank you should you. listen to Dwayne because, I mean, he's been doing comedy for about 80 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80 to zero. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm the one who told Charlie Chaplin that he should try speaking. Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> guess, guess black don't crack. I don't know right. how old that is. <laughs> oh, is that a thing? There we go. Black don't crack? Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. It is? Yeah. You gotta, sure. I mean, it's weird though, because I do feel like we die young, but I think <laughs> we still have good skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's hard to, but black don't crack. But it's, it's, it's I think everyone doesn't crack. It, it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's so, just a matter of moisturizing. So this is for, okay, so my theory with Asians is that we look young, 10 years younger than our age. Mm -hmm. Until you hit one age, and then you s jump like seventy years, and like you could be like ninety, but look like you're two hundred right, for the rest right, of your right. life. So like you're either like ten years younger or like eighty years over your age. You're like, wait, she's only like ninety, but she looks like she's one hundred and seventy. <laughs> you know, it's right, right. <laughs> like those are the options. We're, and know. what age is that? Or is it? It doesn't. Yeah. Change. It depends on the person. I think yeah. it depends on the person. Yeah. But but honestly, I'd rather die as the old Asian people because I like to go to the park in Alhambra to watch all the old people, like yeah, all yeah. the old Asian people. People they hang out, doing the dance, doing yeah. stuff like a white old people just die in the nursing home miserably. <laughs> right, right, so I think right. that. Oh my I, gosh, I, yeah, it's like true, uh, right? Asian people still like gathering around at a party, like old people party in the park. Right, they right. are. They're like, like doing tai chi, chi and, and stuff. Yeah, right? when my friend, yeah. when I was at the Arcadia Mall, when my son was a toddler, this uh, Chinese grandma was like had her her grandchild was having an issues with my son, mm -hmm. and I got into it with the grandma. There's a trend here. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> we started like going back and forth. Right. And then all of a sudden, like, what this Chinese American woman about my age was like, she's going to beat you up. <laughs> I was like, this old woman's going to beat me up. <laughs> like, and then it was like the whole thing, but we didn't fight. So right, I'm just right. going to say, good, we, yeah, we, we didn't throw down. But I remember thinking, like, that's great. She's going to like fight like, a much younger person. Yeah, she Anyways. has nothing to lose. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Jay Z, right? When Jay Z says, like, I shoot you. Oh, yeah, that's a great line. If I shoot you. Um, if, yeah, if you shoot me, yeah, I'm, you're famous. Yeah. If I shoot you, I'm brainless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Yeah. Except, I'm not Maybe he said, it, he said, if I shoot you, I'm brainless. If you shoot me, I'm famous. Meaning I have nothing to gain yeah. to, from fighting you, but you have a lot to gain mm -hmm. from yeah. fighting me. So Because it will go viral. So you, you, since you're quite a multidisciplinary artist, would you say, what's the thing that makes your heart sing the most? Is it the, is it the stand-up? Is that what's really, you know, being on the stage doing comedy, making people laugh, would you say that's kind of where your your heart's at? I think that my heart's is where I spend time with my dogs. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I can't wait. Like one day, like you, I can bring my dogs on stage. Oh, nice. How many, oh, do how many dogs I've do you have? I've seen that. I have two dogs. Oh, okay. What are their names? Coco and Poochie. Oh, Poochie. nice. I had yeah. a dog named Papucci. Pop, ooh. Papucci. Aww. Papucci. Nice. Though. That's Poochie's father. Yeah. <laughs> That's Poochie's master. Ooh. Yeah, I've never seen a dog on stage at like a, a, a you know, at a stand up. I think it, the, what's her, that comedian's name? Eliza. Oh, yeah, she does bring Eliza uh, Schlesinger. She yeah. brings her dog on stage. Really? She brought her dog okay. on stage one time. Yeah, That's absolutely. That's pretty cool. I would just stare at the dog, though. They'd steal the show. Dogs yeah. are cute. Dogs and children, they, they still see yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. And, and um, have you traveled with your dogs? No, I haven't because oh, okay. I have flight anxiety. 
I, I don't even want to fly. That's oh. why I don't think I can tour as a comedian. I just want like, you know, stay local. It's right. scary to fly sometimes. You just got to have a, a drink bus. before you, you get on a plane or something. You, get a tour bus. you could yeah, walk. You yeah, you know, I, yeah, I can't wait one day to invent like a transporter. You just press a button and get there. Oh, yeah. 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 I would <laughs> like that too. Yeah. I mean, either, because either it has to sort of like, like Star Trek, like break down your molecules and reassemble them somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Or uh, it'll probably still be flying. You shoot out into space, and then you come down and yeah. land. And it's or, part or you could come back world. and look like me. See, that would be terrible. Well, I guess we should get into it, yeah? Yes, let's get into it. Here are the facts. Prince Charles, next in line, of course, to become the King of England, recently came out with a statement emphasizing his relationship to Vlad the Impaler, a cruel bloodthirsty leader of Transylvania that inspired the Dracula vampire monster that we see in films and books today, of course. Prince Charles recently stated, and I quote, Transylvania is in my blood. Oh, I should have. I want Dwayne to do this with an accent. Can you do an English accent for me and do that? No, no. I'm I'm, I'm horrible at English accents. You're great at accents. Cad, can you do English accents? I just want to hear it. Uh, actually, maybe I can because Queen Elizabeth and I share the same birthday, 420. <laughs> 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 You're a for tw- 420 baby? I'm a 420 babe, wow. yeah. But oh, I don't smoke God. pot at this point. You also share his birthday with Hitler. I know. Oh, <laughs> no, really? All my Jewish friends like to say this to me. Yeah. Yeah. How do you know that? That's crazy. Because 420 is like a man. Right, right. It's a, the weed. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Are you going to do the... I, I just want someone I can, to do I can it. try. Try, try it. I, I feel it. like Jennifer will do it just as... Just, I was trying to, and then so I got scared. Not not like a drag, not like a vampire, like no. an English person. Yeah. Because yeah. okay. I wanted to do a trans old lady. I said, my do a Dracula. Oh yeah, do a Dracula. Okay. Here, that's, easy. that's a little easier for me. <laughs> Transylvania is in my blood. The genealogy shows that I am descended from Vlad, the Impala, you see. <laughs> Why are you so good at that? <laughs> that is bloody good. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, so that statement has created a lot of buzz because Vlad the Impaler is also said to have been a vampire ruler. So Prince Charles is likely a descendant of a vampire. How is that n- not a bigger thing that he was related to Vlad the Impaler? Why is it the first time I'm noticing this is when you, I read the script? You know what I think? I, and I think it's good, and I'm going to read my part. I think these people who have sort of like seized power and have kept it in their families for generations, they like to hide the fact that they've done that. You know, the fact that like, the German, excuse me, the English uh, monarchy, they're really German, you know what mm. I mean? Or they have, and all these monarchs that that always, um, they interbred, they, you know, they bred with each other. They like mm-hmm. to keep that on the low, yeah. you know? So I think that's why. That's why. But now the, the secret's out because someone, anyone with a, with a keyboard can make sure we all know. <laughs> so anyway, with that, that is banana sandwich though. They're so... Let me put my reading glasses on because that's the way reading. <laughs> that's what happens when you do comedy for 80 years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, Charles, Who's the I, vampire in here now? <laughs> I, I told Charlie Chaplin he should speak, and he told me to get reading glasses. So um, there are many specifics that make it seem like Prince Charles is a vampire. Prince Charles lives in the castle. He's a reclusive, rarely comes out during the day, is a member of the uh, English royal team. And is involved in a substantial amount of ancient ceremonies and rituals for England. The ancient rituals being things vampires would like, since many vampires are centuries of years old, and perform rituals. Additionally, if you look at his pictures, like the ones provided in the show notes, he has like a vampire smile. Does he really? What do you guys think? Look at that picture. Oh, yeah. that's That looks like a person who had to learn how to smile. Like, that's like a, <laughs> that's how you smile when you're in third grade, right? Because yeah. you don't, it, but but then you don't smile like that anymore. Cat, so. what do you think? Vampire mm-hmm. smile or no vampire smile? Yeah, I think, he, I, I think his nose has a little bit, that thing. The only thing I would uh, point out that's not a very vampire is the teeth. They should be more white. But he's British, by the way, so we cannot criticize right. that. <laughs> but that's super white for British. Right. <laughs> for British, it's white. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's like a, pearly white. That, that's a perfect taste for British. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jennifer? What do you think that she has? He has a vampire smile? I guess there's so, 
Um, I could see him doing the Dracula voice with that kind of face. Yeah. 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 Look, look at this picture, right? Doesn't it feel like inside his inner monologue is like, does this look like a smile? Does it look like a smile? <laughs> <laughs> Harley Busfield from uh, bunnow.com writes, some may even compare his features to those of a vampire, as we just discussed, with his defined face and ears. He appears more creature-like. Okay, don't don't do him like that. His <laughs> eyes are set. His eyes are set close together, staring sternly into your soul. <laughs> his nose, which is a prominent feature on his face, points directly at you. Like, where else is his <laughs> nose going to point? <laughs> <laughs> his smile slants ever so slightly into a grimace. Overall. Here's the appearance of a blood-sucking creature. I don't know about you, Dwight. I get all my news from bunnow.com. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so reputable. I know. It's like CNN, right. Bun Lao, Newsmax, right? All right. Finally, Prince Charles also owns multiple properties and is very involved in Transylvania, the home of Dracula, his vampire ancestor. Prince Charles does a visibly large amount of charity work for Transylvania. He is furthermore honorably... Honorarily. Honorarily. Hon honorary, sorry. God, mm. English is new. <laughs> Come on, professor. <laughs> he is, he is furthermore honorarily referred to as the Prince of Transylvania by the local elected officials, which is strange since Prince Charles is the leader of England, a rival European country. Rival? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't think it's a rival. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so as you can see, there are a lot of facts out there that support the Prince Charles vampire hypothesis. So now it's time that we discuss our theories. Dwayne, why don't you get us started? Okay, I'll take off my glasses for effect. <laughs> They're not real glasses anyway. Um, here's what I think. I think he is um, certainly a uh, emotional vampire. That's a thing. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, like, so, and that's what he did to, uh, to Prince Diana, right? He just sort of... Princess Diana. Princess Diana, excuse me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He kind of sapped her, her, her energy. And I think um, his wife is Camilla, right? I think she's also an emotional vampire. So, like, it skips a generation. So he didn't get the real vampire gene. He just got the emotional gene. Can you divine an emotional vampire just so everyone's... Oh, yeah. It's sort of like... I, I don't know if it's the same as the succubus or incubus, but it's kind of like a person who just saps the, the life and energy of anyone who's around them. They, like... They just go around stealing joy. Like even standing next to you, they can steal you. You know how like, you ever talk to someone and they tell a long drawn out story and you just like don't know where it's going? Yeah, like right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> that person is a vampire, <laughs> an, an emotional vampire. Or or someone was like, how's your day going? Oh man, and it's just all these bad things going on. They yeah. just, and they just do that to everyone they come in contact with. So basically it's like with comedy, right? Like some people leave the, some comics, leave the audience in, in a better shape than when they got them. Th these kind of people, they leave everyone in a worse shape, you know, like after everyone's down after they, they hang with them. But I think, so I think he's an emotional vampire, but he, he has that lineage, right? To, to Vlad the Impaler. And I think he hangs out in Trans Transylvania so much because it's like the one person his, his powers don't work on is his mom, okay? And so she might outlive him. He might never be king. So just in case he's gonna just slide off, he's got a he's got a date written down. He's like, by the time I get to blank age, if she's, you know, he loves his mom, but if she's not, if she hasn't given me the, you know, kinghood or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. he's gonna become the king of uh, Transylvania uh -oh. since they love him already. He has a house there. He's already the prince, so he can just go there, be an emotional vampire, kick it with some real vampires, and uh, that's his that's his plan. Oh, so vampire vampires are real, but he's just is yeah yeah he's he's. Vampires are real, and they hang out with emotional vampires oh, sometimes. Okay. And they can't, they don't, like, they can coexist because <laughs> they can't turn it. You can't turn it. This is all uh, based on that TV show, uh, What We Do in the Shadows. So that's why, that's why I'm getting my, my vampire knowledge. <laughs> oh, that's good. good and answer. so a vampire who sucks blood can't turn an emotional vampire into a vampire. Like, they're, they just, they're, they're just like different, different species. Yeah, but they hang out and they kick it. So Got it. he's an emotional vampire who's, if his mom doesn't, do something soon, you know. So is Queen Elizabeth a vampire then? Um, yeah, probably so. Okay. <laughs> that's, why, that's probably why she's living a long time. Right, right, right. Right? Right. But she might be an actual vampire. Okay. Know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's my theory. I'm sticking to it. I don't know if All that right. makes sense. Jennifer, what's your theory? Uh, my theory is that Prince Charles 
is not a vampire because in my opinion, vampires are sexy mm. and I have never known a vampire in literature or movies. And even remember I talked about last week how I had a friend that claimed he was a vampire. Is he good looking? He's not, but he has a, <laughs> <laughs> but he has a, Right. Um, Follow-up question, energy. does he listen to this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I got to think about it. I got to backtrack my steps. I hope he doesn't listen to this yet because that'd be mean because he's such a nice guy. But he's got a nice, he's got a good energy. He's mm. got a real good charm, right, right. charisma. So I think, because you don't have to be good looking to be sexy. I've known people that look like not even, they just look like animals. And that's, they were that's what I tell sexy. myself all the time, Jennifer. Really? Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying this a chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, it's like that song, you know, big dick energy. It's like, you wait. know, it's all, it's just like a, it's there's an a song energy called, thing. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. There's, I haven't listened to hip hop since like yeah. Pac died. So. Right? That yeah. song. Tell me about this song. What is this? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Well, back up the 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 term. I think it was uh, was it uh, Ariana Grande or Selena Gomez? Someone who dated Pete. Pete, okay, Davidson. Pete, from, Pete Davidson from okay. SNL. After they broke up, said, you know, because I guess someone was saying he's not a looker, and this girl said he has big dick energy, and that's kind of became a he thing. He hundred percent does. What does yeah, that yeah. mean? It means you it's confidence, I guess. Yeah, it's confidence. You don't have to. You don't. I'll tell you from personal experience, you don't actually have to have a big dick and you can act like it. And meaning like, you're not saying that that is the definition of manhood in any way, but it just has to do with like charisma, personality, confidence, swagger, even. So so that's what I mean by sexy. Because I've been definitely dated, I'm sure you've been through it too, Kat, where you've dated someone that's yeah. not very empirically good looking, but sexy as hell. So that's what I mean is Prince Charles is not sexy to me. And he doesn't have BDE. That's what we're saying. <laughs> Okay. So part of the, the extension of that theory is that he wants to be. He wants to be. So that's why he'd be hanging out in like Trans Transylvania and stuff like that, because he's trying to infiltrate. He wants to learn. He wants to learn with the vampires and he wants to become. That's a so one. interesting. You know why that's interesting to me? Because the guy who wrote that book, Pickup Artists or how, oh. you know, that, that whole book of how to get girls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That you, dude. He had like a reality show. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You, you neg them and this, that and the third. He, that guy looked like a vampire because he tried <gasps> to like look all cool. You know oh. what I mean? So I think along those same lines, vampires know how to get women and Prince Charles is just trying to like yeah. have some of that rub off on him. It's like, it's like when you're five, six and you hang out with a bunch of basketball players, you know, like right. you're still five, six. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. But hey, if you're five, six hanging out with basketball players and you act like you act like a Pete Davidson kind of thing, then you're going to be okay. Right. I like that theory a lot. Yeah. You, that's why men, if you're listening, if you're short, I'm telling you, don't let it bother okay, so you. Can I ask a question? Okay. Out of all the men in this room. <laughs> we're, we're so digressing right now. <laughs> <laughs> Who has the, the best BDE? Uh, I don't know. Maybe Eduardo. Yeah. <laughs> That's, that was the wrong answer. Okay. Let's start over. Oh, Is it you? I don't know. All the Asian men in this room. <laughs> okay. Koji, Koji, you too. Yes. Oh, Koji. Like, what? Yeah. I, speaking of this, I just wrote a joke for our Asian brothers uh -huh. about the BDE thing. I haven't performed that joke yet, but it's, I just want to give credit to lots of Asian guys there. Lots of Asian guys do have enormous dick. Woo! So, yeah, like I did this joke for my ex-boyfriend. I was like, hey, who said Asian guy don't have big dick? My ex-boyfriend has enormous dick, but he just don't use it on me. He used yeah. it on the video games. <laughs> <laughs> and let's remember now, Prince Charles, right? Diane was cheating on him. So see? Right, but he was cheating he on was her. He was cheating yeah. on her too. Yeah, he did that first. From the yeah. very beginning. Yeah, yeah he, he was in love with was always, yeah. always yeah. in the picture. And I guess he, he couldn't marry her back then for some reason. Yeah, he, I think he was in love with her the whole time. Yeah. That's yeah, why yeah. it made Diana like hurt herself, right? Aww. Yeah, I think it's like emotional cheating is worse. Because uh, I think Diana yeah. knows a uh, Prince Charles was deep in love with Camille. So, like, she understand even, like, they were married. I think uh, Diana think, you know, Prince Charles were never, ever kind of really falling in love with her because his heart was with Camila. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, speaking of that, my theory, if you guys want to hear my theory, my yes, theory. Yes, we do. Uh, yeah, thank you. King, King BDE here. Yeah. <laughs> of, of all the Asian men in this room. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so my theory is this. So, so Princess Diana didn't like him. He was, she always thought he was kind of a loser. You know, if he wasn't a prince, he, she wouldn't have been out going out with him. <laughs> and so he, you know, like he always wanted to feel better and bigger. 
So he started spreading this lie that he was a vampire. And he like started like telling all the press that was hanging out. And he'd say, hey, I'm a vampire. And he said, like, I'm related mm. to Vlad the Impaler. But like, like Dwayne was saying earlier, all the royal people are all related to each other. Right. So he knew that he was related. It just took some nerdy guy to figure out the actual right. relationship. So this all started because he was insecure about how Diana disrespected him for the mm. very beginning. I see. Aww. I see. So, so why does it keep going on with you? Well, he said it once and then on the internet. People just keep talking about it. I see. I so see. we're we're just doing the propaganda of of Charles. It's propaganda from like twenty years ago. I see. I see. I see. Yeah, it kept going. So and then I wonder what 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 does Camilla think of it? She's she's indifferent. She well, they they have they have vampire role playing sex. <laughs> 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 he like she like he pretends to bite her and you know he's like I'm a vegan vampire. You know, like, <laughs> vegan vampire. <laughs> There's nothing funny about cape. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> like cape? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, Kat, what is your theory? I kind of agree what Jennifer said about, like, you know, the guys, it, you know, sometimes you don't have to be good looking to be sexy, right? Actually, most of the time. And then I feel like for um, Prince Charles, he, you know, obviously he's not good looking. And Wait, then, stop. I mean, it's in the eye of the beholder, but not yeah. too many people have. I would, be- I would fuck them all over. Not too many you beholders, did? I would. Really? Yeah. For what? <laughs> <laughs> What's the most sex feature about him? You want to fuck him? His his beautiful white teeth. I think that. <laughs> yeah, I think that tie looks great. <laughs> no, it's the fact that he's a prince. Yeah, he's a prince. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have to prove anything else, right? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, go ahead. It's okay. And then Andrew mentioned about like emotional vampire. Maybe, you know, he does have that energy of him to suck out all the good energy. Like, honestly, I never felt he's charming as well. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so, you know, some leader, when they make speech, like, you know, Obama, they stand on stage, you will know they have that charm, right? Like when he's speaking, I just want, I just want to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe that's a vampire. Yeah, it's like a, I put you asleep. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he has it. Yeah, so you're going with emotional vampire as well, or he's both an emotional vampire. and a regular vampire. Yeah, he's I, both a vampire. Oh, it's hard to debate this one. I think I'm go. I'm gonna go with regular vampire. He's a regular vampire. Yeah, regular okay. vampire. he sucks yeah. blood. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, the one thing about him being a, a regular vampire, which I think is good, is that <laughs> the rules of vampirism, like, you know, you're into zombies, right, Koji? Every book has different zombie rules. And so the whole, they don't go out in the daytime or they can't see themselves in a the mirror. That's all from like one book that may not be, yeah. that may have been added. Mm-hmm. To, like that's that's not how vampires really roll, you know. Well, I, mean? I saw this documentary called Twilight, uh-huh. and in Twilight, he's able to go outside, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, Edward, right? right? So, I mean, have you guys seen that documentary? I haven't. I haven't actually. But, uh, I yeah. love that documentary. <laughs> I watched it ten times. Oh. It's so enlightening, you know. <laughs> Apparently girls that's just really want to become funny. vampires, right? They just, that's all they want to be. Oh, right. We're at the point in the show where we need to pick the unofficial official story. One that will once and for all answer this question. What do you guys think? Which theory do we want to go with? Is Prince Charles a vampire? And if so, what kind? This is one of the hardest ones we've had, ever had. Because yeah. everyone's thing is good. And I even like, I like the fact if he's a real vampire, then that would explain why he loves um, Camilla so much, if I'm saying yeah. her name right. Because... It's always the one he doesn't bite. That's the true love, right? It's yeah. like, if I loved you, I would have bit you a long time ago. You know what I mean? So, you know, maybe he bit Diana and she was like, oh, damn it, you made me a vampire and you love that bitch because you didn't bite her, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I like him faking it. I like that a lot. Yeah. Personally, I like the the big dick thing. I yeah. mean, <laughs> Like, well, I don't like big dick. That's that. That's not that came off totally wrong. <laughs> you mean like he? His inner, like he's actually he hangs out with vampires. He hangs out with yeah. vampires. He hangs out with vampires. But he's not really a vampire. But he's not really because he was a wishful. He wants to learn the ways. Yeah, I kind of like that. I kind of like that too. But also, it incorporates cats in the fact that he's he knows he's not charming. Right. And so, <laughs> so either that's because he's a vampire, or he just doesn't have charm. So I'll hang out with vampires. Just to give myself a little boost. It's like, um, I read this book once. 
in the book, this guy had to entertain these nerds. And so he told these nerds that his tie, he got his tie from like um, Leonard Nimoy, Dr. Spock. And so he didn't have charm, but the, the nerds were like, oh my God, you you met Dr. Spock and, and da, 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 you know what I mean? So I think um, Charles is just doing anything to like- Get some credit. To be interesting, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And get some credit. So I like, I mean, both of them touch upon that, but I like I like him faking the whole thing and just <laughs> hanging out with vampires. What do you think, Kat? I kind of agree with Duane on this. I think he's faking it and he hang out with real vampire to increase his charm. <laughs> and then- um, you know, like we said, you know, he's not charming, but he gets girls well, just because he's, he's a friends. Prince. Yeah. 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 I like that. I like that. I like, so I, I guess that's Jennifer's theory. You know, when William, when he enrolled in that school, I forget what college he went to. I think he went to college in Scotland, all right? And when uh, he enrolled, like the female enrollment went up like 600% or something oh, really? crazy. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean. To... And then, so one of them got lucky and was the one who married him. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, that's Can you secret. imagine that? That's crazy. <laughs> that's the secret. We figured it out. That is the official story. Mine. Mine's the official yes, story. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. So we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we'll do a round robin on different royal conspiracy theories. Yay. Let's go through some other royal conspiracy theories. First up is the Meghan Markle conspiracy theory. Reader's Digest reports that the theory making the rounds is that the marriage of Meghan Markle to Prince Harry is a political gambit that will allow the United Kingdom to reabsorb the United States because Prince Harry's kids will be Americans and Brits. One could grow up to be president and king. So they want America back. And this is how they're going to do it, according to a viral tweet reported on by Time. That's crazy. That's banana sandwich. What I like about it is that the last queen of America was Queen Charlotte, Charlotte, right, who was mixed. So the last queen of America was... What are you was, talking about? When America, uh, when we had the rebellion and we parted ways with England, yeah. at that time, oh, got the it. queen was Queen Charlotte. Got it, okay. And America technically was a part of um, the got British okay. Empire. So Queen Charlotte was mixed. Mixed with what? She was part black. She was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. that's, that's a fact. So it would kind of be this nice full circle thing wow. for, them make, for them to then, you know, have another president who rises to the ranks, who's mixed, but also British, and then, you know, pull us back in. But the only thing is these kids won't be, their kids won't be in line for the throne because William's kids are in line for the throne. Unless they get eaten by vampires. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> but maybe that doesn't matter, right? Maybe, I think it, I think it's an interesting thing. It only works if the kids are really smart and they don't have British accents because no, Americans aren't going to vote for a president who sounds although British. British. Although oh. British accents make you sound smarter and more sophisticated know, so people but, will like it. But being smart is a problem in a lot. Like, that's true. Uh, <laughs> you want to have beer with them. In this country, yeah. yeah. He's like, that's a guy I mean, drink a beer with. Yeah. Right. I think that's what me off is when they put you in words that don't have you in it. You know, like when they put an extra letters. Oh, like color? Yeah. Oh, like, like harbor? Or, yeah, that's yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. I can't vote for somebody like would put a U. Or they, <laughs> or they say uh, alumni, aluminum. That's yeah, that's, aluminum. that's unacceptable. That's un-American. Yeah, that's right. Ad advertisement, <laughs> advertisement. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> but I, I like this theory. I mean, I wouldn't mind it. One of the things I always say about... Uh, about the revolution or, mm -hmm. you know, when we revolted against the other country was that- I called it the rebellion. I can't believe I called it that. <laughs> rebellion. <laughs> Is that we might've been better if we didn't leave England, you know, because right. like, for example, in 1840, the English outlawed slavery. Right, right. And it wasn't until 25 years later that we outlawed slavery. And um, if we were part of England, the South wouldn't have been as powerful because mm -hmm. they have like the English empire. Right. So we don't have right, to- right. And, we don't have to bow down to the South like we did. And I could probably go to a bar and get a cup of tea without people looking at me sideways. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You get tea at a bar? Sometimes. But in England, you can do it. Hey, wait, is, no that, is that BDE energy? <laughs> that, that does not feel like that. <laughs> that, that, that seems like, I guess it would qualify as showing you're confident you don't give a fuck. So then, yeah. Wow. It could be. Sometimes I'll get a hot chocolate in a bar. <laughs> Whoa, that's my style, too. Oh, I do okay. get that hot chocolate. Awesome. Yes. So I bring uh, like I like like physical books. I read physical books at the bar. I, I, well, just anywhere. I bring books with me. And oh. I was waiting for some. I was waiting for a meeting, so I was reading a book. And all these like girls were talking to me about it because I was reading and like I was not interested in talking to them. Uh -huh. And then I was telling my friend who's single, I was like, "Hey, all you have to do is read a book, and all these girls will talk to you." Mm. And he and then he tried it. He's like, "Nobody talked to me." I was like, "Were you actually reading, or were you trying to get a girl?" And he's like, "I was like trying to get a girl." I was like, "See, I was actually reading. I didn't want to talk to the girl. Right. And the more they wanted to talk to me, the less I wanted to talk because I wanted to go back to my reading." Right. That's that's. 
why girls love DJs. Yeah. You know, it's like this whole nightclub, everyone's dancing. All these guys are trying to buy drinks for girls. And it's one guy not paying attention to him because he's just. God, that makes sense. And then they all want that guy. Because if yeah. you can get his attention, that means it's it's more valuable because the scarcity of it, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> DJs are automatically like a little bit hotter. Yeah. No female DJs what. are hot too, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Female DJ is definitely hot. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. What do you guys think about this theory? Yeah. I mean, I love any, you know, conspiracy theory. I like to humor it a little bit. But I think that the idea of it seems kind of cool. I don't know if it's like a conspiracy, but I could see it like I could see it happening and making sense and then it turning everything on its head, you know, the whole uh, America Brit dual citizenship president king thing. But I don't know if it's actually like intentional. Yeah. Well, we can't, it can't be worse than Trump, so. Right. Yeah, huh? <laughs> right? And they have moved here, right? They're, yeah, they're here. They're in Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. what about you, Kat? What do you think? This sounds very interesting, especially this tweet reported by Time. Sounds very reputable. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's no Bun Lao, right? Or Bun Ow, right? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I had to look at the script. I had to go back to the schedule. <laughs> what the name of this? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Next up was Queen Elizabeth I, or one, a man. <laughs> oh, um, God. So the theory goes, according to uh, Lauren Kahn and Marissa uh, Lallybert, or Lalliberte, uh at Reader's Digest, that in the 16th century, King Henry uh, VIII sent his young daughter, uh, Elizabeth Tudor, to a small village to avoid the plague. Uh, supposedly, she died there, and her governess was terrified to tell the king, known for his killing of wives, of his wives, that they'd failed to keep his daughter safe. Instead of fessing up, they tried to find a girl her age to take her place, but the village didn't have any suitable, anyone suitable. Instead, they asked a farm boy named Neville uh, to be the decoy. The plan worked. The child swap explains why the virgin queen never married, according to conspiracy theorists, because she... She was a dude. She had a dude. She, she, had, she, had, she had a penis she, she had a schlong, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you guys think? Oh, my gosh. I mean, no, no, I don't think that's <laughs> legit. Queen Elizabeth, I mean, then how did she, the kids, like, I'm just trying to figure out, that means if she's a man, then then her kids, like, there has to be multiple. Well, she, didn't no, she didn't have kids. Yeah. She's a virgin queen. Yeah, oh. she, she didn't marry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, it, and it's oh. saying it's, well, she, she had a penis, not a vagina. And she had, uh, like, she wore a lot of powdered makeup and wigs. Yeah. Um, and she had a penis, not yeah. a vagina. I don't know. I yeah. mean, she was a strong... No, and see, she I'm wants, not even going to go there. And she once dunked on her brother. I don't know if that matters. <laughs> <laughs> she stuck it in a little bit, she said. <laughs> my I finger. don't know. <laughs> I mean, I've seen many a movie about her, but... Here's the thing with this one is that if the father loved his daughter so much that he sent her away so she wouldn't die, mm -hmm. and then they, they swapped it with some other kid and you can't tell that, it, that it's not your <laughs> daughter, you know what I mean? Well, there wasn't Instagram back then, too. I know. I thought about that. So or like, TikTok. There's no TikTok. There's either. no pictures at all. Yeah, there's right? no pictures. So well, there's paintings. There's paintings. Yeah. <sighs> Somebody could have painted what she looked like before. Yeah. But now it looks like the new one. This yeah, would be hella dope. It's just the thing is that the problem is that she she ruled, you know, she was smart. And there was a, if you read the research, like people were like, this, she's too smart. She can't be yeah, a woman, yeah. you know? So I think a little bit of it's like shade that oh. a woman couldn't be this smart. So therefore it, she had to be a man. Yeah. But she spoke six languages. To me, that's a woman thing. Because I think, I think women pick up language better than men. On average. Oh, wow. Okay. I think so. I think it's I think it's easier. Like if two people, if a husband and, and, and a wife move somewhere when they're like in their 40s, unless the husband will only pick up the language faster if it's for work. If it's just sort of just hanging out, the woman will pick up the language Women faster. give birth better than men. Women give birth better than men. Yes, yes. So <laughs> I, I like this story. It would be kind of dope just kind of that they pull the fast one, but I, I just can't believe it. I can't believe that. The, the the father could be tricked like that. Men pee standing up better. Right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Jennifer shaking your head a bit. <laughs> I do think women are better at language. We can look it up, but I think that studies have shown that. Kat, what do you think about that theory? I just don't think this makes sense for me at all. You know, how could they not tell, like, you know, like the, the back then they don't have plastic surgery, like, 
Mm -hmm. You know, how can, how can you not tell? How can you not tell? Like these days, you can easily like you know, Katie Jenner you can easily get it down. But back then, like all the faded appearance, you couldn't hide it. Oh, maybe they wear lots, lots of. They clothes. wore a lot of clothes. Yeah, yeah I mean, just, just put it this way: people thought Elton John was straight or Liberace was straight, so people were able to convince themselves of a lot of things. Mm. Oh, okay, I know, but well, we're talking a whole different gender. But people threw panties at Liberace. And yeah. like you look at him and like I could like close my He's eyes. Like, These are not my size. <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. like, I don't know. I want to believe this theory. I want to believe this I theory. do too, but like it just a lot has to have fallen in place for, for to trick this many people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I agree. Okay, so is the current Queen of England, Elizabeth II, a Satanist cannibal? Oh. Amy McKellendon, is that how you say isn't her name? From Harper's Bazaar details. This strange theory about the Queen and Prince Philip's stems from the fact that the children appear to go missing whenever they're near. Case in point, when scores of Canadian children went missing, this coincided with Her Majesty and the Duke of Edinburgh making a trip to Canada. Yikes. There is a correlation here between ch uh, children disappearing and the Queen of England visiting places. Is she a Satanist cannibal? Yay or nay? If not, what is she doing with the children? That's a good question. Th this is very QAnon, by the way. This is like straight out yeah. of QAnon. It's like yeah. the same. It's the same theory as QAnon. Yeah, it's like that song. I believe the children are the future. Well, Eat them well. And no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Eat them well. Well, isn't it a big logical jump saying like children are missing and she's eating them? All right. Why is that such a fun? Why do people love to go there? Yeah. And just because you're a Satanist doesn't mean you want to eat children. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> what else could you be doing with them? That's soccer. The soccer. They like well, soccer. If you never there. see them again, <laughs> if you never see them again, people are going to eventually be like, well, because it's like if I give you a note, yeah, okay, and I have some secret information written on it. I'm like, make sure no one sees this. And then as soon as I give it to you, you look at it, you absorb the information, and you have to get rid of the note. You're gonna eat it, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> unless, unless you have a lighter. <laughs> if you have a lighter, you might burn it. You right? could also but shred it. There's a lot if, of you could cut it if up. you have that kind of time, right? <laughs> 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 but if I give you a note, you, you're going to eat it. That's, that's yeah. what people do. Women are better at eating paper than men. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and, um, and eating penis. Except, well, actually, except, I don't know about that one. Except manila envelopes. Men men are really good at eating manila envelopes. <laughs> um, Ouch. <laughs> that doesn't even mean anything. Um, here's, here's what I say about this one. I think that it's, like you said, Koji, with the eating, it takes it one step further, right? Yeah. In my research, I told you, like, two reputable news services like debunked this. They went out of their way to debunk it, saying like, when the kids went missing in Canada, the queen actually never visited that place. And it's like people, like say like Jay-Z, like a thousand rappers must diss him every day in some shape or form. So he's only gonna reply to the ones that, that are big enough to reply to. So something about them reporting, it just seems like there's, there's something there. And I will say this, like maybe the queen is not a cannibal or anything like that, but some atrocities have happened on quote unquote her watch. So mm -hmm. she's still kind of responsible for it. Like the mass graves they found in Canada, right? Children, mm -hmm. mass graves in native, Canada. Native Canadians. Yeah, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in Australia, you had the whole lost generation. And I didn't know about this till I went to Australia. Like they took a whole generation of Aborigines, separated them from their, from their parents. We did that here, by the way. Yeah, yeah. They separated them and they like never went back to their parents. So like slavery, or like you an get experiment like experiment or no, no, just, just to, to separate to, them, to the train culture. them differently. Yeah, and, the Australian. Oh. yeah, yeah. And so like with slavery, you go, okay, you you physically took these people and then you sold them. But even when that when that wasn't necessary, they did it. So all these things have kind of happened under her watch. So did she literally? Was she literally involved? Not her. Under the not because she hasn't ruled England in a while. But you know, under the just, just England is responsible for a lot of these things, mm -hmm. whether she is personally or not. Well, know? so for me, I'm not a huge Q. I mean, obviously I'm not a QAnon person, mm -hmm. but uh, it's so close that it makes me think. And then I start to think that, I mean, the one thing that makes me kind of think that this might be true is that there was that whole, uh, one of the princes, I forget his name, was like connected to- uh, Andrew, right? Was it Andrew that was connected yeah, yeah. to Jeffrey Epstein, right? Yeah, yeah. And Jeffrey Epstein did have sex with little children, or mm -hmm. I don't know how little children, allegedly. Oh, well, I guess he's like dead. under, Like underage. Not, yeah, yeah. Not, not Maybe 17 or yeah, yeah. 16. Well, that, like that. that we know of. Right, right, right. Yeah. That we know of. <laughs> that we know of, allegedly, just to protect myself. So there is like a thing that he was like hooking up with people under the age. Uh, but uh, Kat, what do you think about this theory? Well, Koji, why do you just talk about a Jeffrey Epstein? It reminded me like his death as well 
and then yeah they there's some connection between like prince andrew and jeffrey epstein and now the children thing making me think mm -hmm. there may be some connection there but the children mm -hmm. are very young children right not like a 17 year old like you know teenagers yeah. right yeah with, with andrew yeah, yeah. But, but there's this indian website i found <laughs> <laughs> no, no, like uh, Native American. Oh, got it. Okay. And, and in Canada, someone, you know, it could be a lie, but someone was like, when I was a kid, they lined us up and the queen came and it was crazy because she didn't have the entourage. It was just her and, and Philip, I guess. And then they took like seven or seven kids and we never saw them again ever in our life. Oh. So is that wow. true? Uh, Probably not. Probably not. Yeah. Right? Oh. Do you think they trained those kids to be spy later on? Oh, could there be? you go. Ooh, you know? I like that theory. That's yeah. solid. So they didn't eat them. They trained them. <laughs> yeah. no, like, you, you have to, like, you know, to be, like, you know, very loyal and in, in order not turn those spies to become a double agent, you have to start training right, when right. you're a kid. I love this. You know why, too? Because... Uh, British do have the best yeah, spies. Yeah, they have good oh, spies. Yeah. And these kids would, like, think about it. You need people who... This is such a... This is a dynamite theory. Because you need people who are racially ambiguous, Right. And so Native American or Native Canadians, whatever you call them, they, they can probably pass for like many different races. Yeah. Right. They can pass mm -hmm. for, to, they can be Latin, they can be Latin, they can, they can probably go to Eastern Europe and fit in. They can even look Russian if you need them to. So I think, um, I love that theory. Isn't this the, the isn't this the story for Black Widow? Kind of. Instead, instead yeah. of Russian? Right, 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 right. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Oh. What do you think, Jennifer? I think this is reaching. This one is fun. I think it's too much. No, well, no. I hope it's too much, yeah. No, can cannibalism. <laughs> it's just more of that QAnon thing. Yeah, come on now. Okay. Yeah. Fun, fodder, but no. Well, you, I think I think when you go cannibalism, that's where you take it a step too far. <laughs> yeah, you know it, was, I mean? it was fine before that. And then the cannibalism <laughs> right. part became too much. But no, I love cats yeah. theory. Like, they're, yeah. they're, they're just spies. If you're not following us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, you guys and gals are missing out on additional content that you won't want to miss. We've got event and giveaways announcements and the opportunity to let us and our fans hear your stories, absolutely true facts and crazy but totally legit theories. Find our socials on our website or search for the unofficial official story podcast. Thank you, Kat C, for coming on with us. Such a pleasure to have you here. So please tell us more about where people can follow you, you know, your sites, your handles, all, all the good stuff. Thank you, Jennifer. That's his favorite part of this podcast today, to tell people to follow me. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the whole reason I came today. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> That's our generation. It's about following, right? Yes, yeah, so you guys can fo follow me on Instagram, TikTok, official Kat C. I occasionally use Twitter as well to prove I'm still reading something. One thing I do want to mention before we end this episode, this episode was, if it sounded different, I didn't write it. I usually write all the episodes, but this year we're lucky to have two wonderful interns and the next couple episodes are going to be written by them. So Eduardo, say, you want to come over here and say hello real quick? Great job. What's up? Uh, my name's Eduardo. I'm an intern for Koji and I'm from LA <laughs> and we're keeping it LA strong here. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Did that feel like big dick energy to you guys? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to say. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Koji, if if people ever have to say to you, oh, you have big dick energy too, that's not really big dick energy to make people. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if, I, if I have to like encourage people <laughs> right. to say it, yeah, you're right. I'm going to have to. <laughs> if I pay them, it's okay. Though, right? As long as we don't see it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you all so much for listening. There are millions of podcasts out there and we're so honored you've chosen ours to listen to. So thank you. If it's your first time tuning in or if you're a regular listener, we appreciate it. Keep the ratings up. Keep the reviews up on, on Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, all that. We also have a website, unofficialofficialstory.com. Our show notes are there and you can hear our past episodes. Be sure to come back next month. We're going to find out the answer. This is probably going to be Koji's favorite episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> Who killed Tupac? This is going to be the best episode we've ever done in our entire show history. <laughs> this is, this wow. is going to be a good one. All right. Well, thank you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>